Welcome back to the garage, guys. We are here working on the big block Miata this time. We're gonna be trying to figure out a way to rebuild this shifter and get a little more control over this ride. So guys, I know it's been a minute since we discussed the big block Miata. We got a little behind on ordering parts. The weather took a turn for the worse. We got down in the 40s over the past couple of weeks, so we actually had to cancel a project over that. But we're gonna get back on track now. It's supposed to be in the 70s this weekend. We've got a total of 85 days, five hours, and 16 minutes to get this project done and get this car ready for the burnout box. So we really gotta get cracking on it. So our Miata has a 7.5 liter big block with a C6 Ford automatic transmission made it to the back of that. Now, when we put it all together, we assumed it would be pretty simple to put a shifter on it. Turns out, hooking this factory Miata shifter to the big block transmission was actually a bit of a trick, and we failed. So, what I did is I built some levers and some rods and some things just to get it to work about two days before the last competition. So, it was a rush. There was about a case of beer involved, and it worked. Actually, it's still working now. It's just horrible. Trying to find neutral is like trying to balance a razor blade. So, we're going to take care of that right now. So I did a bit of research trying to figure out what the best shifter was for our situation. Now, here at Dickie's Garage, we've got a bit of a budget issue. In fact, the issue is we don't have a budget. So what we picked up was a secondhand Hearst quarter stick. This is a three-speed shifter. It's got the reverse lockout. I got this for less than most people pay for their oil changes. So I'm actually going to try to mount this on top of the center console so that it's slightly elevated. And then I got a little something else to go next to that. So if you guys have watched my solid axle swap videos, you may have noticed I've been avoiding the topic of rear brakes. Up till now, the Miata has only had front brakes because we wanted the back end to be loose and ready to spin. So when I did the Mustang swap, we lost the parking brake too. So now I got a shifter that doesn't have park, no parking brake. I'm not gonna lie, I've been carrying a block of wood with a car just to chalk it so it doesn't roll away when I stop. But that's about the end. Check out what I got. This right here, well, or this right here rather, this is a wet brake. We're gonna tie this into the rear calipers. It's even got a little place there for like a parking brake sort of deal. So between the new shifter and being able to get the transmission in park, and this puppy right here, I'm gonna be able to get rid of my block of wood. And I can't tell you how happy I am about that. So what I wanna do first is remove this shifter, build a support stand so that I can mount the parking brake or the e-brake or whatever you, the wet brake, how about we call it the wet brake? So I can mount the wet brake here and the shifter next to it on top of this console. So let's get this thing apart. All right, so I lifted this center console out of the car. I've gotten rid of the factory shifter. See this hole I was talking about? I can actually see the tail housing of the transmission. We popped the e-brake out of here too, cause it's kind of useless now. So I got a little open space to do something there. Let me show you what I did. So here's the factory shifter we took out of the car. It's kind of a big metal plate with this lever that goes through. It's got a gasket down here on the bottom. It's got this awful looking mess tied to the bottom of it. I don't know who did that, but it's horrible. We've got the parking brake here, just three bolts and a cable is all that holds that in. Pretty simple stuff. I think if we can get swapped over to these components right here, we're gonna be a lot better off. So now we gotta go find us some metal and we're gonna build us a lower plate to cover that hole. We're gonna build some supports and an upper plate to hold the shifter and uh, the other thing. Yeah, the wet brake. So we made a trip to the hardware store. We picked us up this piece of uh, sheet metal here and a bag of stuff. I think within this bag of nuts and bolts is everything we're gonna need to make this happen. So we cut ourselves a top plate that we're gonna mount the shifter and the wet brake to. 
we went ahead and put two studs through the original shifter hole. We used carriage bolts like these so that we'd have something to bite into on the bottom. And then we put spot welds on there just so they don't drop back through. So I've got the plate roughly where I want it. What I have is two 5 16 studs coming up from the factory shifter plate. Now what I'll do is I'll cut these down to length and leave just enough room to put some washers and nuts on there to hold that plate down. Now the next step is I want to stud all four mounting points on both the shifter and the wet brake with quarter inch studs coming up so that all I got to do is set these on the studs and put the nuts on. So here is the nearly finished product. We've cut these two 5 16 studs down to where we need them. I built this plate out of sheet metal here with some studs to hold the wet brake and the shifter. Now these are quarter inch studs. I didn't get as many as I wanted because of the shape of it, but I did get enough. So this is gonna sandwich on here, but turns out this is a little flimsy. So what I built was this reinforcement plate out of heavy gauge steel to kind of sandwich things on there to make sure the shifter is nice and firm when I'm banging gears. Only thing left to do now is put it together and see if it works. So this install went really well. We've got everything securely mounted. We've got full access to our window switches and our HVAC controls. And the best part, we can find gears. One pull of this puppy, we've got her in first, second, third, and then we need that neutral, that, that infamous gear that we couldn't find, bump, we're done. No more hunting for gears. Plus, when we've got this bad boy in high gear pushing towards the wall, we're gonna snatch this puppy right here, get it turned in the other direction, pull it back and let it eat. This is exactly what this car needed. I'm glad we've got it installed. We've got the cables and the brackets on order. They should be in any day. We're gonna pick it back up with the next video and take care of those. But for now, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.